Hello everyone, um, we are Palomares, I will be present from the I2CAD Foundation and I will be presenting the first demo regarding the Connect Copy of Flat Platform Orchestration and first let me do a quick recap of what uh, Roman presented in the work package for system architecture. As you can see in this figure, uh, there are all the modules that have been developed throughout the, the course of the project. You can see from top to bottom, we have this multi tier orchestrator in charge of governing all the MEC systems, alongside with the intelligent orchestrator components that regarding the, the constraints of each of the requests of the AAFs, will select the most suitable MEC system or not. Then we have at MEC system level the, the orchestrator, the MEC orchestrator, the MEO, and in some systems that need some uh, accelerator resource management, we have the IARM located, as well as these uh, modules, as these um, implemented modules. We can see the other interfaces that we have uh, developed. Some of them are brand new, and some of them are based in the new Etsimec uh, Federation architecture, as you could be the Mio to Mio uh, interface. So let's jump into a quick recap of the features of the of the Mio. As as Roman mentioned, we have two working features that can be uh, used in each of the or, or, or in the in functionalities. So. I'm going to start a quick introduction on the standalone because all the use cases use this one. But for the sake of explaining all the features of the Mio in the demo, we're going to show the non standalone to show an end to end deployment. And as Roman mentioned, the Mio has this uh, capabilities of management of the distributed edges and it's able to instantiate applications uh, based on their constraints. He has a modular design. And this helps this integration with different models. In this scenario, with the Light Edge, the platform manager, or the intelligent acceleration module, that is the DIRM. It provides the whole crew, the onboarding and instantiation, migration, and termination of, of applications. And in, in this scenario, the standalone version, it's done in order to fit the constraints of security and privacy of some of the of the owners of the network. Maybe you don't want to interact with more, you want to have ISO isolated. So that's why we developed this standalone feature. Then as the non-standalone feature, it's uh, as you can see in the figure, we have a standalone Neo that can communicate um, horizontally with another uh, MEC system, with another MEC orchestrator. As Roman mentioned, this Neo to Neo interface is based in the new HCMEC standard in, in Federation. And this allowed the different MEC systems to coordinate and collaborate without having to re to have this uh, multi tier orchestrator in charge. This gives the advantages that in case of failure of the multi tier orchestrator, the MEC system can still talk between them and readjust the weight. This is the same for the standalone, but in the sense that it could be still working, but it wouldn't receive any more requests from the multi orchestrator in case of failing. And as we mentioned, it can, in the non standalone, can also trigger this instantiation, migration, and termination. So once we finish the, the recap, this is the validation scenario that we're going to want to showcase. As I mentioned, we're going to use the non standalone in order to have all the end to end functionalities of the of the architecture. As you can see, we have three different modules. We have the NSAP, the MEC system A, and the MEC mm -hmm. system B. For, in order to give more power to the demo, we are sure that the NSAP is located in a Azure VM that is located in Germany, in the Germany region. And each of the MEC system is located in one of the partners, Desbet, one in Italy and one in Greece. So we have three geographical locations for this uh, scenario. We can see the MTO and the IOC located in the NSAP. And the MTO is managing both MEC systems. And MEC system B, as you can see here, he has the IARM located because he has some uh, hardware acceleration capabilities while the MEC system A does. So to give a little bit of context of the of the video, because we're going to showcase a video, <coughs> we're going to showcase uh, three different kinds of AIF, or artificial intelligence functions. We, they're going to be an image classification, an image segmentation, and sentimental analysis AIF. Each of the applications, they have different requirements. Some of them are going to require some hardware accelerator and some don't. And we're going to see 
the end-to-end workflow from the instantiation request from the IOC selecting the best suitable MEC system due to these constraints, application constraints. And we're going to see the workflow of the MTO asking the MIO and the MIO forwarding to the to the prefer the optimal uh, host to allocate the application. So in the video, you're going to see different terminals, but uh, they're going to be uh, encapsulated in order to see what's going on in each of them. As I mentioned, first, we're going to deploy two uh, non-accelerated classifications AF, and you're going to see that right now. And the IOC will select which MEC system. So the request arrived to the MTO. The MTO contacts the IOC. The IOC selects which MEC system is the one. In this case, it selects the FPK. So as you're going to see, this application starts being deployed in the MEC system of FPK. Then we have another deployment that arrives to the IOC. And in this scenario, the requirements, the IOC respond that the best suitable MEC system, taking into account the requirements of the applications, is the ICCS MEC system. So it's for water, as you can see, to the ICCS worker for, and you're going to see the application starting and running in this application. Now, we're going to have two more, but one is going to be non-accelerated and one is going to be accelerated. In this scenario, the one that is accelerated is located in the, is the one being created is the one located at ICCS because it's the only one of, of hardware accelerator capabilities. So makes sense that the IOC selects that MEC system to deploy the application that requires hardware acceleration. Now, in order to showcase that we can also delete this application from the from this request, we can clean these uh, applications, and you're going to see the all all the applications that were are starting to be terminated in both MEC systems. Now, to just to recap a little bit, in this first part, we have showcased two uh, two capabilities of the of the structure. The first one is that we can select with that with the IOC the best um, different destinations regarding the best suitable host for the application request, and also we have seen that we can differentiate we which MEC system we want to deploy based on the hardware requirements. So we not only take into account computational requirements, but also hardware acceleration requirements. And in the last part of the video, we're going to deploy four AIFs that are the sentiment analysis, but we're going to directly send the request to the MEC system of FPK. This means that in the actual descriptor request of the AIF deployment, you can the user, the operator, can select which if you want to directly allocate one application in a specific MEC system regarding one of the constraints that you have. So you can directly ask the, the architecture to deploy in a specific MEC system. If you don't specify that, then the intelligence component, the IOC, will select the best suitable destination for you. And now we deploy the four one that I just told you. And the MTO receives the request and starts directly allocating the, the request to the next system B. Because it's inside the request that we want to have it in the FPK MEC system directly. So we don't need this intelligence. And this is going to do it for the fourth. It's the third one, and we're going to do it for the fourth one. And all of the applications, as you can see, are located in different nodes of the cluster, and they're all up and running in a very fast manner. So in this demo, as a quick recap, different destinations regarding the application's constraints, we can select the destination regarding the hardware constraints of the AIF deployment. And we can also directly deploy an application if we want to target a specific system. And we, all, we do this in a very fast and efficient way.